We have a listener question. One of your fans who is here right there tonight, Bethany Kay. Hi, Bethany. Wondering, which of the songs on three came the easiest? And did you try to write in order to tell the story, or is that just not how you work? Jared, do you want to feel Who wants to feel that one? Easiest one to write? Easiest one. Well, maybe not to write, but that came easiest. Donna came pretty easy. I remember the piano poured out of me. Sent like a sentence to Wes. Wes came up with this whole song lyrically. And uh, it just was piano mostly and Wes's vocals. And it was a really fun, yeah. simple song that kind of... Ironically, a song like Gloria was probably one of the most difficult. Wouldn't you agree? I mean, it was like... Yeah, for sure. That was a pain. Gloria seems like a simple <laughs> song. Yeah. And I, would, I was just eating at this place called Italy, And they talk about it's difficult to be simple. <laughs> and I really agree with like... Gloria is a simple song, but it's difficult to be simple. So. And were the songs written in order? Uh, no way. No, I mean, even the songs themselves are, uh, they're like multi-headed, you know, it's like a Humpty Dumpty or something, or Mr. Potato Head. There's all these ideas that we steal from other songs when the other songs, you know, didn't work out. And so Gloria is an old idea from part of it from the making of the second record, and then another part of it's from, I was riding a motorcycle and I came up with something and I took a pee and recorded it at the same time, and you can hear it. Um, so everything is like, jumbled up, and I think that makes for a good song instead of like sitting down and trying to write in a linear kind of way. It's very Frankenstein or something. Yes, that was the word. I was I said other words, but that was the I word. Like I like Mr. Potato know. Head. I like that. That's a little yeah. more that made no sense, rated yeah. <laughs> or something. Yeah, you said it's a family of radio, right? So. Totally, 100%. I want to go back to cinematic stuff, but, um, but not the videos or the film so much. M. Night Shyamalan has something to do with something somewhere in the inspiration for the album pretty early on. What's that story? Yeah, we were lucky enough to open for U2, and uh, backstage M. Night came for that show, and then his family and him also listened to our music. So um, we met him, and we're really thrilled, all of us. I think all of us are really big fans of his movies. So um, he turned out to be a really sweet and friendly person and a genius at movies. So he said, I'd love for you to write a song for us. And he eventually asked us to write something for the end of Glass. So if you've seen Glass, you didn't hear our song in there. Um, because we wrote it and he didn't want it. But at first he said, this is, I love this and it works so perfectly. And then he was like, guys, I put it's it in, it doesn't good. work. It's not, it's not you, it's me. And um, we said, that's okay, because we were already in love with this song. It's called Salt in the Sea. We'll play it later on. Um, but it's this, it's this song that we wouldn't normally really write in the style in which it was. It was a darker hue, kind of like his movies have this vibe to it. And it was like, if we can wear this hat, we feel like we have permission to because he asked us to. We, so if someone says, why is this like, well, M. Night asked me to do this. And then once that was gone, we said, well, we, we kinda, it kind of works. So it, it informed a lot of the, the later half of the record, I think. So we have him to thank. It's yeah. at a tone or, or a vibe. Yeah, I don't think so. I think sometimes you put yourself in a box. You don't realize you're doing it. And he brought us out of that a little bit just by, just by asking us to write something that he later said no to. <laughs> Harry Potter and hip hop have uh, some, some little stuff to What's do the with the album? What's the hip hop element? Oh, the, uh... the Dr. Dre piano? Oh, yeah, yeah. Mm. Well, Harry Potter, we're, we're all fans of the books and probably the films, too, and uh, it's pretty interesting. The Warner Brothers is kind of the blue skies, white cloud, very gold, WB emblem, logo, and by movie, you know, five, six, by seven, part one and part two, it's kind of decrepit, rusted, rusted out. You can't even really make out the WB logo anymore, and I think we thought... It's like us. Yeah, kind of like us. <laughs> <laughs> I think our first album, when we were rehearsing for album two... We were listening to the first album again. I think me and Wes were just looking at each other and kind of smiling and being like, wow, this sounds so, it just sounds like a debut album. It just sounds kind of innocent or something. And now I'd like to think, you know, album three, it kind of shows some change, some evolution, some maturity, similar to Harry Potter. So that must be where that comes from. Yeah, and I was reading them at the time when the, the guy asked me about, I, I brought it up because it was on my mind and Jared read it years earlier. And so I would ask him what happens and, all these guys would mess with me on who dies and who comes back. <laughs> That's the joy of having really good friends in your band, right? Yeah, I think, yeah. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe for more videos from your favorite artist. And while you're here, check out these other videos.